one. Hi, welcome to week 10. I can't believe it. Week 10 already of Rise, the podcast. This is the podcast that's all about entrepreneurship. So it's Rise Up, uh, Impact, or Inspire socially aware entrepreneurs. And each week we interview guests that are making a difference, making an impact on the world, on the planet, in community, in business. And that's what it is. It's about inspiring the entrepreneurship, um, inspiring entrepreneurship, because as we all know, in the last 20 months, entrepreneurs have been really hit hard and affected and uh, by what's been going on. And so it's like, let's rise up and let's get our, our, our strength back to, to be creative, to open up, to make a difference, to make an impact. And today's guest I'm really thrilled to have is a colleague and friend. He's a uh, former judge here in Ontario. He's a uh, very creative gentleman as well. He's got a passion for writing and poetry and entertaining people. Entertaining to the point that he too has, like me, has a background in broadcasting and being on air. And even at his ripe old age, we won't say it, or should, can we say it? Oh, okay. He's in his 70s. Um, but, you know, doesn't look a day past 76. Um, but even at this stage in his life, he's still creating. He He's now hosting his own online radio show with music. Uh, he shares poetry, but he's also a very connected man. And you'll, you'll, you'll get to hear that. He's really, um, you know, tapped into spirituality and love and harmony and peace. And I'm really happy to have Alan Fisher as our guest. So, Alan, um, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Um, you know, we're going through something that so many of us have not gone through, maybe ever in our lives, what we're going through. I, I guess, you you know, some, on some level you could say, yeah, it's, it's a war. And on some levels, it's just sort of, yeah, it's, it's a, it's, this is a marathon, not a sprint. How has your past equipped you? for coping and and even maybe thriving because i'd say you're thriving you know you're you, i never see you really down or mopey or complaining and you're you're still very creative and you're still very out there with your pursuits of uh radio now it's online i guess that maybe that's changed and poetry and 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 in connecting with others how has your past equipped you uh to be able to handle what you're what we're all going through now and especially yourself Thank you, David. Well, I started in radio at a young age. I'll go back um, to when I first saw Elvis on television. Uh, that's way back. And I said to myself, I don't know what he's doing or what he's got, but I want some of that. And I didn't know how to sing or play an instrument. So the closest I could come was a DJ and uh, that's what I wanted to be when I was uh, 12, 13 years old. I knew my path. So uh, I wanted to quit school at about uh, age 12 or 13. And uh, finally, I was told, no, you have to at least wait till 16. Uh, but I uh, went to Europe when I was 17. Uh, and then finally, I landed a radio job at uh, age 19. And it wasn't exactly what I wanted because it was country music. I had never heard of country music before. But I learned and uh, started at the all night show, got the evening show, then the morning show. And uh, it was a wonderful four year experience. Then I did the morning show at uh, CKLB where you worked uh, as well. I think it's CKDO now. And then I also did part-time radio when I was going to law school. So that was my passion, and it's still my passion. Uh, throughout the years, I always maintained a, uh, a foot in the door uh, for DJing. I did promotions, festivals, dances, you name it, I've done it. I, I remember one... Uh, humorous one was uh, a hog farmers gathering 
and uh, it not only smelled bad, but <laughs> they weren't really <laughs> into uh, dancing. Uh, but it was all fun. So I've done every kind of uh, DJing that you can imagine. And uh, I know that's your passion too. Yeah, it, it is. And definitely your communications for sure. But, you know, um, how did you uh, go through, you know, like what, what was it in you that that how that you've learned in your life that helps you to um, manage these times we're in because they've been pretty confronting for everybody. What is it, you know, in your background? It sounds like creativity is a real passion, um, entertaining people and making people happy, and and that in a way is healing others uh, is is a passion of yours. But what is it in, in your past that has helped you to be able to manage these very challenging times that we've been in? Thank you, David. Well, spirituality in a word. I can't imagine going through this with just my self-active mind. So it would be very, very frustrating, depressing, challenging to say the least and a lot of people have committed suicide mm -hmm. through mental illness or depression because of it there's been a tremendous loss of freedom loss of civil rights um, and it's very very difficult for an entrepreneur in these days so spirituality so expand on that. What, is, what does spirituality look like to Alan Fisher? Well, I would say not thinking. Now, that's scary for most people. And what I mean by that is self-active thinking. We all have that voice in the head. We're all thinking uh, all the time, trying to come up with new ideas, plans, insurance, security, uh, how to get money, how to get this, how to get that. And it's all using the mind, trying to be in control. We're not. We're not in control. And that's the big thing for people to understand, I would suggest, is that we are not in control, as we can see uh, by this so-called pandemic, or just by the change of the seasons. What changes our seasons? What makes us blink? What runs all the organs in our body? What created us from little babies? I mean, I have two sons. I don't know how to create ears. I don't know how to make eyes. That was a miracle. And we are a miracle, David. So it was waking up to that, that there is a superior intelligence with design and control that is running the show. So people get all caught up in their story, all get caught up in their um, self-active, selfish little world. It's not that small. <laughs> uh, it is small when it's a, a small s and it's ego and it's strictly the mind. But when you get out of your head and that voice in your head and realize that you're a part of life, a part of nature, a part of everything that is living, it's life that is animating us. Life that is animating everything on the planet. So uh, when you realize that you're a part of that, I lost my ego, which was wonderful. And, and that's the biggest thing uh, to realize that I'm not Alan Fisher, the story, little me against the world, but rather it's life coming through me. So this is unscripted, unrehearsed, uh, I'm not reading this from anything, David. This is coming through this human form. And when you allow that to come through, then it's really creative, and then you're really thinking properly. 
So that's my suggestion for entrepreneurs. I could expand upon that. But. Yeah, you know, but I want to I want to tap in because you said something really interesting. You said, you know, it's it's about letting go of your ego and quieting the mind of all that mental chatter and the drama. And this one did this to me, or I'm going to go and you know do this. And so, tell me about what 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 happened when you. Uh, you know, took your ego on and said, "Hey, I'm letting go of you." You know what? What? What is ego number one? And then what went into letting go of your own ego? It what, happened. What does uh, that look like, too? You know. Yeah. Well, I was lawyering, and I was doing personal injury cases, and I met a lot of doctors and chiropractors and that sort of thing. I'd get their reports. And there were two chiropractors that seemed to have it all together. They really uh, seemed to know what was going on. And uh, one of them invited me to what I thought was a chiropractic convention. <laughs> and it turned out to be something else. And uh, he picked up a few people on the way. And they seemed to be loving and uh, huggy and uh, yeah, that sort of thing. So we gathered at a hotel, there were a number of speakers, and I was fresh from law school, and I sat there all day wondering, what are they selling? Because everybody seemed to be selling something, and that was my experience. Was it uh, Amway? Was it Bibles? Was it, what were they selling? So I developed a big headache, <laughs> and finally about supper time, the head blew, the heart opened and I just let go. I surrendered. I realized that they weren't selling anything but life, which is freely available to everybody. And I was so in love. I was so high with everybody. It was a wonderful feeling. And all feelings of competition, um, of ego, uh, gradually left and uh, it took a few years it was a process to trust really trusting life really having faith that everything's going to work out and it did not by thinking not by what was practical yeah not by chasing it right not by chasing it but by giving and letting go and allowing life to come through and then miracles started happening and I, I would suggest to people get a little book and start writing down the miracles that can happen when you do this it is amazing just amazing how, how did letting go play out and, and especially in, you know, your relationships as a dad, as a, 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 a guy at that time, as a, a lawyer, how did this idea of letting go play out and, and impact your life? Well, I didn't see myself anymore as the role. Mm. As, as a lawyer or as a father or as a husband, um, I saw myself as life coming through me. And uh, rather than trying to get and just confine to the role, an identity with the role or what I was thinking, I knew that something was coming through me. Some magical force that's not magic, but it's, it's available to everyone. And I would suggest to people, um, just feel that life force inside you. You're breathing, you're blinking, uh, it happens for everyone. Feel your, you know that you're alive. <laughs> you know, you know that you're alive. That's what's animating you. So let that come out. Let that express. How did it manifest in my life? Well, uh, I found my wife and I were going separate ways. I thought she was right there with me, but no, it, she was afraid. She was afraid that her husband was going bonkers. <laughs> but after we broke up and I lost my family, which was very traumatic and very hard, 
uh, I maintained a relationship with my sons. And I realized that they wouldn't have really known their dad, authentic person, had it not happened. You know, I was stuck in a role. You go along, your friends get married, you get married, you have kids, you have a mortgage, you have a house, you have a car, and then you die. That's the horizontal story. But something happened to me, something changed in me so that I was genuine. And it felt wonderful. I could be myself. I could relax. And that's the other thing, David. We're brought up to think of ambition. Get ahead. We're, we're ahead of what? <laughs> Where are we going? You know, like you're trying to get to the finish line. The finish line is death. So enjoy the time here. And speaking of time, there is only the present moment. There is nothing in the future. That's all imagination. We worry about the future, what's going to happen. So many people are afraid now that they, they don't live. They're afraid of dying. Well, that's just surviving. <laughs> that's not living. So it's important to live and, and enjoy in the moment. And life only happens in the present moment. The past is gone. The future's not here. No need to worry about it. Focus on now. When I was lawyering, I had maybe 100, 150 files, but I put one file on my desk, one thing at a time. That's all we can do. That's all we can do. As far as multitasking, that's, that's baloney. You do one thing at a time. And, and try to focus on that. Become aware of what you're doing, what you're thinking, and every move you make. And, and what's around you? We've got eyes, we've got ears. Use them. Get in touch with your senses. Get in touch with your body. Get in touch with your breathing and slow down. People think they've got to get faster and more accomplished and, and ooh, ah. relax. Let it come to you. Instead of running after it, let it come. There was a book, I think, from Montreal, near where you come from, uh, What Makes Sammy Run. Do you remember that? Uh, well, <laughs> you know, it's trying to chase after something. If I get this, and if I get that, and I'm going after this, and going after that, relax. Let it come to you. Let life bring it to you, because that's what's genuine, and that's what's going to really make you happy. That's what's for you. If you try to get after something, it's just what other people have programmed you to, to get. Relax. Walk in nature. And, and David, you take beautiful pictures of, of nature. And you appreciate nature. Because nature is what we are. It's just seeing ourselves in the tree, in the colors, in, in the beauty around us. So when you were a little baby, Everybody adored you and you were wonderful and they all ooed and not. We're still that. We are perfect. Know that. Yes. And so when you took that course with these two chiropractors and, and things opened up and your world, your heart expanded and you're, you let go of things, your ego and your beliefs and certain, even your, you know, your marriage down the road a little bit. My question is to you, is it, it was almost like you had a transformational experience. And for the first time in your life, you were able to truly love yourself for who you were. Because it sounded like up until then, you were always chasing sort of a goal, a dream, you know, taking on careers, you know, maybe to please others. Talk to us a little bit about, you know, where self-love comes into play here, Alan. And for those watching and listening, what do they need to do in order to really just love themselves for who they are? Because I think that's really important right now because we are being challenged on a personal level and, and things are collapsing and changing. And I think what's emerging is this self-love and, and, and this the state that you you went through a number of years ago. So talk, talk to us a little bit about this notion of self-love, how it played out in your life, and how do, what do we need to do to access that? 
Wonderful questions, David. Um, okay. Um, I think we're all programmed and brought up to think that we are 63% or 52% or whatever mark we got from a teacher. Yeah, we're not enough. <laughs> the biggest thing is I'm not good enough. I'm worthless. Oh, he's got it all together or she's got it all together. Baloney. <laughs> um, it's not a matter of comparing. It's not a matter of what someone else says. It's knowing that you are perfect. You are perfect just the way you are, whether it's at age 12, 5, or 70. You are perfect just the way you are. Now, in this moment, because it's going to change. Now, as far as self-love, that's a, a little bit of a misnomer because I'm not talking about the small self. I'm not talking about the ego or the self-active mind or your story that has brought you here to this point. I'm talking about the life force that's inside you. That is perfect. Okay, that is the thing that is perfect because it runs everything. Now think about an apple. What creates the texture and the taste and the color of an apple? That is amazing. That same life force created you and created me. That's the real you. That's the real you. So the story kind of ends. The horizontal plane that you were on ends and there's a vertical dimension. Now that's very scary and very different than the way most people are thinking. Because they think if they just became a lawyer or a judge, they'd have it made. Or whatever your goal happens to be. Or, or the saying, uh, the person who has the most toys at the end is the winner. <laughs> no, you're a winner if you are your authentic self and you're allowing that to come through without being self-conscious, the small self, the small ego, and just letting that go. I mean, kids are great at it. They're not wondering, like my little grandchild, three years old, the little girl, and, you know, she dances and she plays and, and it's, it's wonderful. She doesn't think about, oh, what do I look like or what other people are going to think of me. It's expressing that life force within, you know. That's the big thing. Or you learn to walk and you fall a few times. So what? <laughs> you get up and try again. Because walking is a beautiful thing. And living is a beautiful thing. So self-love in the sense of the life force within you and within everybody and it's freely available to everybody <laughs> you know you can't put a price on it but you can put a price on what comes through you so for all the entrepreneurs whatever comes through you in the moment that creative uh, impulse creates things you everybody loves to create whether it's a relationship, whether it's a meal, whether it's a business. We love to create. Relax, don't take it so seriously, don't take it so personally, and let it come through. I love it, I love it. So Alan, I got a couple of questions left for you. This is great, by the way. Um, I, I do a lot of work with youth entrepreneurs. So these are people that are 18 to 29, and I'm teaching them about planning. What would, um, what would you advise uh, a young entrepreneur working on their, their business plan, which, you, you know, you need a roadmap and some idea of what you want to accomplish in your, 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 your goals or your business. Um, what would you advise a, a younger person? Uh, how, what would you advise them in terms of how can they approach their business in this way that you're, you're, you're talking about here today with us? Okay. Well, whatever they're going to create does not exist at this time. Right. So uh, don't be afraid to try new things 
to let it come through you. I remember, uh, I mentioned about Elvis. I was 12, 13 years old. What I really wanted to do was be a disc jockey. And um, I wanted to go to Ryerson because they taught that. But to get to Ryerson, you had to have certain marks. I didn't have those marks. So I went around to different radio stations and I saw what they did and how they did it a little bit. And they were my heroes. They were my idols. Uh, some of the guys on Chum, you know, wow, yeah, that is fantastic. That personal connection to a whole bunch of people, that's wonderful. So um, if you want to do something, maybe there is a role model up there that um, you don't necessarily need that formal education. I mean, if you do, that's fine too. But if you want to be a lawyer, hang out at a law office for a while. Intern, you know, that's, that's been a popular phrase. Intern a little bit. Find out what they do. Maybe you don't want it. I remember I went to law school uh, three years. I had no idea what a lawyer did. <laughs> My brother was a lawyer. I could have gone and, and seen, but I didn't. And I had no idea what a lawyer did. And then when I, I came out, <laughs> after law school and, and bar admission course and, and all interning, I, I came out and I realized, oh my goodness, that's all they do? They just give advice? <laughs> oh my goodness. But, you know, you go along with it. But I thought, I didn't even know what a lawyer did. I was, you know, imagining. So I would say, you know, hang out with people who are doing close to what you want close to what you're interested in and learn as much about it as possible. Try out different things. And for heaven's sakes, if you fail at something and, and that's nobody fails, no. it's falling down when you're trying to learn to walk. It's no big deal. It's no big deal. And forget about what other people think of you. Forget about the mind. Oh, you didn't do this or you did do that. Forget all that. Don't judge it. Just let it happen, relax, enjoy, and have a sense of humor for about it. Yeah. And, you know, it's like a, you know, your three-year-old granddaughter, you know, she she's walking or dancing and falls down. You're not there going, oh, you idiot, look at you. you. You never succeed at anything, you know. Well, there's no way we would talk to a two- or three-year-old learning to walk or dance like that. You know, why, why then do we do that to ourselves when we're adults and maybe we didn't get a result we wanted, you know? Talk to us a little bit, too, uh, Alan, about resiliency and how we can have a little bit more resiliency, maybe trust and faith goes into that in these times that we're in. Yes, because um, <clears throat> the birds are freer, the squirrels are freer than we are. Uh, look at that, you know. Um, how do they know where to find food and where to make their nest? Uh, what changes the seasons? You know, the leaves are falling from the trees. We're getting ready for winter. Uh, how does that happen? <laughs> uh, it's a miracle. It's a miracle. That same miracle, that same life force is animating us, is coming through us. So uh, if you get down, if you get depressed, if you have setbacks or something like that, keep that pad and write down the miracles and focus on that. Focus on giving thanks for all the things that you do have. Focus on what brought you to this point now. Focus on the fact that you are alive. You know, maybe 2% of the entire population of the world didn't make it through this. 98% did. Give thanks. You're one of the 98%. Isn't that wonderful? So don't wait around to die. Live. Live now. This is the only time we have. And I think this time has given us a pause, a time out in the penalty box to refocus and, and change our way of living and slow down. Smell the roses, smell the coffee, relax. It's all going to work out. Know that the seasons come and go. The sun goes around, you know, and actually we're going around the sun, 
But, you know, you can trust that. You can trust it. And that's the problem, I think, with the world, is we're going around the sun. We're going around and around. We're getting dizzy. We're getting sick. We're going crazy. And, you know, like, yeah, um, I'm kidding. Uh, the last kind of thing, uh, or second last thing, is you still have this, you know, really um, inspiring creative spirit where you love to write and share your poetry. You're, you just started uh, in midsummer to host a, you know, podcast radio show. You know, where does that come from with you, within you? And what, what, what can you encourage others that, I hear a lot, you know, a lot of entrepreneurs or individuals say, yeah, but I'm not creative or I'm not this, or I'm not, I can't, I can't do that. What would you, where does your spirit, your creative spirit come from? How has it helped you? And what advice would you give to others to nurture and, and their creativity? Well, and the example you gave, the phrase that you use, I'm not creative. No, you're right. You small uh, s are not creative. Allow it to come through. Now, as far as the poetry writing is concerned, and this is for anybody, uh, you go for walks in nature. I go down by the water and, and, and uh, the sun shining on me, it just comes. The poems come one line at a time. <laughs> it doesn't come all together. For some people it does. They see the whole picture. I remember my younger son. He used to, as a child, start in the middle and, and work his way up and then there'd be a picture. He saw it in his head. <laughs> Some people have that. I don't have the whole picture. I usually, you know, one line at a time. But um, it comes through you. It comes through you if you get out of the way and allow it to. Uh, you as a small person, as a story, are not going to do it. You know, let's say as, as a musician, you know, you come up with some, oh, that sounds like... Uh, 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 Eric Clapton, or that sounds like Paul McCartney. Forget it. <laughs> Don't copy somebody else. What does, it, what does your expression say? What does your business say? And, and yes, uh, David can help keep you on focus and keep you on track. You have to answer some of these things, like who is your target audience and what do you intend to do? To do? but allow it to come through. Have faith. Those are just guidelines. Like hockey, you know, it's played on a rink and there are boards around. That's fine. But in the middle of the boards, you're going to make some, some goals and it's going to be fantastic. So know your parameters. Have a rough idea of the roadmap, but don't let that constrain you. Let it come through, even with those uh, parameters. Yeah, and you know, you talked about letting go, and when you let go, the, the what you're saying then is the ideas flow, the 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 uh, the creativity flows, um, the talent just comes out. But when you're stressed and holding on, it's got to look a certain way, and I've got an image to you know, I'm a lawyer or whatever you you know you do in in life. When you're holding on to all that, the creativity doesn't flow. It, it's more about struggle and work and the grind rather than just being just allowing to be an open vessel for 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 flow for for ideas for for love for 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 passion am i right absolutely and don't define yourself as a role because you'll express in many different ways usually creative people like musicians we think of um John Denver or John Lennon as guitarists, but actually they also played piano. And John Lennon also drew. He was uh, an artist as well. So, and, and the way they dress, you know, it's expressed in different ways. Uh, and you can be an artist just on, on the way you dress and the colors you mix. Uh, some people like to garden. That is a creative expression. Let it come through. This year it might be flowers, next year it might be herbs, it, it might be food, all different things. Don't constrain yourself or, or define yourself, categorize yourself. That's what a lot of people do. 
A, a lot of people saw me as a judge. I hated that because I'm a human being. That's just a, something I do. And know the difference between who you are and what you do. Totally different things. Also, to, to kind of close off, who we're being and, and, and what we do. So we're human beings, not human doings. Absolutely. Absolutely. And what does that mean? Everything is being. Everything in the universe is being simultaneously. <laughs> that apple is growing on a tree the same way you're growing, the same way a rock is growing, the sun is growing. Everything is moving simultaneously, that one power. And there's that one character behind me. He's, he's going off to sing tomorrow night. <laughs> hey, David. Yeah, my last question for you, uh, Alan, is, is, is this. If you uh, were to sit down with your granddaughter or grandkids um, and, and share one piece of advice that they could take with them their whole life, what would it be? Be yourself. Don't worry what other people think. Don't try to emulate this one or that one. Don't lose that magic. Don't lose that love of life. Don't lose that self-expression because you have it whether you're age three and just starting out or age 20, 25, whatever age you're at is the perfect time because that's saying, you know, this is the first day of the rest of your life. It's true. Where do we reach you to tune in, connect with you, learn from you? Where, where do we reach you? Shameless promotion well, time. Saturday mornings at 11, I am on otunradio.com. Just like iTunes, only the letter O, small letter O. otunradio.com at 11 Saturday mornings. Or um, they can email, I suppose, alanfisher.dj, as in disc jockey, at gmail.com. Beautiful. I really loved our time together today. Likewise. Great having you. Um, I want to thank you for listening and watching to Rise the podcast. Uh, we'll be back next week. I wanted to. I was going to have this guest that I I, I I threw to last week, uh, this week, but she couldn't make it. So next week we're having Dwayne Appeal to talk about um, managing burnout. She she's an entrepreneur and she's one of those you know uh, got to go, got to get, got to do, Alan and. Uh, she's, uh, she's taken her off herself off the hamster wheel for the rest of the year to, to really nurture herself. So, um, she's going to be our guest next week. Remember to, uh, rise up. So that's rise up, inspire and impact socially aware entrepreneurs. I'm David Cohen. It's been a joy being with you. Uh, Alan Fisher, thank you so much. And we will be back next week with guest Dwayne Appeal for week 11 of Rise the Podcast. Have a great week, everybody.